What's up guys, Four here. So, recently calculators got unbanned in Minecraft, and already we have some wonderful tools available that help you maximize your triangulation and runs, and in this video I'll be going over how to set up and use various strategies with NinjaBrain Bot. Hope you learned something, and let's get to it. The first thing you will want to do is install the bot to your PC. Uh, you do this by clicking the link in the description and it will take you to the latest release. You will scroll down, you can read the change log here if you want, but your main focus here is NinjaBrainBot version number jar. You will click that and save it. I like to put things in its own folder for ease of access and then you just simply run the jar file. It may prompt you about certain things but then it should be open and ready to use. So now that you have the program up and running, let's go over the settings. Now, first one is show nether coordinates. I like to have that on because it's nice information to have. It is the nether coordinates. If you build a portal there, it'll correspond to the calculated overworld coordinates. That is very useful to have, so I recommend keeping that on. Auto reset when idle. This will clear your entries after 15 minutes if you're a forgetful person. Always on top, keeps the window on top of everything if you tab out. Translucent window, self-explanatory. Notify when new version available is also self-explanatory. Display stronghold location, I recommend keeping this on 4.4, that'll put you in the starter staircase based on the calculations. 8.8 and chunk are useful if you're experimenting with things though. I like the detailed view type because it shows other potential offsets, so if one misses or something just doesn't seem right, you can pick an alternative. Theme, got some beautiful themes to pick from. And then window size, I'm going to keep it on large so it's easy to read. Now if we go to our advanced options, standard deviation, this is a pretty important value, we'll go into detail about that later. Uh, show angle errors, that shows you how far off your measurement was. That's some nice info to have. It can help you figure out what you're doing wrong, measure more precisely. Crosshair correction here. Sometimes the Minecraft window messes with the position of the crosshair, and you can use this to adjust for that. It's kind of complicated and typically will only happen if you're in a strange window resolution or not full screen or maximized. Advanced Stronghold Statistics, just keep this on. Alternative Clipboard Reader, you will toggle this if, for whatever reason, F3C isn't working for you. Keyboard Shortcuts, this is your pixel adjustment. So let's say you're doing sub-pixel precision and you need to adjust your angle. Use these hotkeys to do that. Reset, clears all entries, undo, pretty explanatory and then show and hide window that's also pretty self-explanatory so the last value we will go over is our standard deviation in layman's terms what this is is how far from exact your eye measurements will be so the lower this number is the closer to the stronghold you will typically land the higher confidence it will have and the closer you will be however you will also need to make sure you are measuring the eye more precisely. So a lower number will decrease the margin of error you have. And a higher number will mean you can measure more imprecisely, but it will be more of an approximation rather than an exact value. The first strategy we will be going over is low precision triangulation. This is the one that's easy to start out with and does a pretty decent job at getting you close. Your first two eye throws will usually get you within a hundred or so blocks, and then typically after your third you will find the stronghold. This method is quick to execute, easy to learn, and allows you to not really have to worry about any of the big complexities, and it's good enough for most people to do. To execute the strategy, we must first calibrate our standard deviation. This is done by clicking the button here and following the on-screen instructions. So it wants us to change our command hotkey here to K. So I've already done that. We will then go back to the game and press F3C and it'll drop us somewhere and give us an eye throw to measure. 
So you will just measure the eye throw how you would in a run. I personally drop my sensitivity and FOV for this, but that's just the way I do it. Do it however you'd feel comfortable doing in a run. And then just keep measuring the eyes and pressing F3C. And eventually it'll give you a value here. Once this value stabilizes, it can take like 10 or so. You will want to take note of what the value is. Click done. So ours is stabilizing around 0.03 here. So I think I'm going to do this last one. We're going to click done. And then it will fill in the box for you and you're ready to triangulate. Now that you have set up your standard deviation, you're ready to execute the strategy. So simply take your eye vendor, line yourself up in the corners of blocks. This corrects a desync that happens sometimes and will make your throws more accurate. Measure the eyes how you would with your standard deviation calibration. Go a little bit off your angle, and then line up for a second throw. Okay, it's giving us 36% confidence on that location up there. Uh, it's probably not going to hit. We can teleport there, and we'll see. Now, lucky for us, the stronghold there's ocean exposed but if it wasn't we wouldn't know and 36% isn't very good to bank on so you'd probably want to do a third eye throw once you're at that location just to make sure and then with this one we have 100% that it is minus 7 16 15 08 and if we go over to our starter staircase right here you will see it is correct. Next, we will be going over the subpixel precise strategies. Uh, to do these, first, you're going to want to set up your uh, standard deviation to be 0 0.008. And then you're also probably going to want to set up a magnifier in your OBS. So what you can do for that is add a display capture of your main window and then uh, it's kind of hard to see with everything in the way but crop it to be the very middle move that over to your corner and expand it up right click here and go scale filtering area and now you have a nice magnifier setup this is helpful because we are going to be looking at the pixels and even the sub pixels of the eye so you're going to want to have this ready on standby and then if you want, you can go to your settings here, go to hotkeys, and then set one for your scene to toggle this on and off when you need it. I won't do that right now, though, because I don't even use the magnifier in my runs. But yeah, now that you have that set up, what you're going to do is line yourself up in the corner of blocks. It is very important that you correct the desync here because being off by even one one hundredth of a degree will make it so you probably miss. Throw an eye. Zoom in to FOV 30. Okay, well, it depends on your screen resolution. 1080p windowed users will do 30. 1080p full screen users will do 31. And then for 1440p, you will do 35. Full, uh, windowed and 36 full screen and then for 4k it is 40 windowed 41 full screen I'm going to be on 30 because I am using 1080p windowed drop your sensitivity all the way down to yawn and then look towards your eye now I'm going to be throwing multiple here for demonstration purposes but you're going to want to use f3 escape to pause buffer your lineup so you can get it exactly and move over until you have a lineup that looks like this to some degree. So you can see here the right edge of our crosshair 
is touching but not overlapping the middle pixel of the eye here. So you see how there's these three pixels that make up the eye slit? Crosshair needs to be touching the left edge of the middle one. So this is the lineup you're going for, but you'll notice that when you get this lineup, there are actually three, sometimes four different ways it can look. What we have here is what we refer to as a right side large or a right fatty, something like that. This means you have your lineup perfect. You can tell this because you'll notice the right pixel looks a lot bigger than the other two. See how it's kind of wide over here, larger than the other two. So you'll be identifying your wide pixel to figure out how much you have to adjust it. So here we did a perfect job. We won't need to adjust it. We just press F3C and then go on our way. Here we'll see the middle pixel is larger now. We have the same lineup of the right side of the crosshair touching the left side of the middle pixel, but the middle one is larger. So for this one, we will need to adjust by 0 0.01 degrees positive. So you just press the hotkey you signed earlier for increasing the angle. And then here, you can see we have the same lineup, but we have more pixels on the left here. This is a left side fatty. Uh, left side is larger, wider, whatever you want to say. And for this one, you will adjust it by going minus one on the angle. So press F3C. It was the left side, so we will press minus one here. And it gives us our coordinates here, which we know from earlier in the video is correct. 7, 1, 2, 15, 12. It's the uh, 8, 8 of that chunk. So you'll see with one eye throw and some precise measuring, we got the exact location of the stronghold with pretty good confidence here. 47% chance to hit it. That's pretty good. The next strategy we will go over is the perfect plus estimation strategy. In order to do this one, you'll need to go to your settings, click Enable Standard Deviation Toggle, and put in the Alt Standard Deviation box what you are, your calibrated standard deviation is. So that's just if you're doing a normal non-subpixel measurement. So for us it was 0.33, so we'll leave it like that, and then you'll set a hotkey here to press when you want to change your measurement to use the other standard deviation. So it'll be the same subpixel measurement as the last one, where you line up in a block corner, drop to yawn, identify your subpixel, go for the lineup and adjust it. So here we have it left. So 72% on the first one. I'd personally just take that and run with it, but if you wanna be sure, you can run over to another block corner here and then do a quick measurement here. And then you'll notice once you measure it, hit your hotkey to change the standard deviation. You'll see this red dot here indicating it's changed. Our percentage went up a little bit. So we went from 70 to 76. Sometimes it'll go up a lot more if you have a lot of offsets here that are far apart it'll pretty much eliminate other ones. But this wasn't a very good example of showing how much it'll help, but in some cases it does help a lot. And it gives you just a little bit extra confidence on your angle to make sure you make the correct decision. The final strategy we will be going over is called double perfect or double subpixel. Basically, it is the only way to pretty much 100% guarantee you I spy the stronghold from any distance away with only two eye throws. Now it should be fairly self-explanatory what it is. It is like the single throw, perfect, only you do it twice. So we'll do one here. This 
starting with 72%, and then we go over here. Line up for perfect again. And you'll see we have a 99.9% .9 chance that it is that coordinate. It is correct. Hopefully that covered everything you need to know about operating NinjaBrain bot. Big shout outs to NinjaBrain for making the bot. It is an incredibly useful tool and he has it set up in a way where no matter what your measuring strategy is, it'll work the best it can for you. Um, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. I'll try and get to them. You can ask around the community to find someone who's using it, and I'm sure they'll be glad to explain and help you out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and happy calculating. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.